Now, the BBC is reportedly planning to introduce adverts around its audio output for the very first time in a move that could have massive implications for rival commercial radio stations. Our national broadcaster, funded to the tune of £3.8 billion a year, let's not forget, is apparently working on proposals to introduce adverts on podcasts and radio shows streamed on third-party services like Spotify. Well, joining us now to discuss this is Principal of South College at the most amazing university, Durham, my alma mater, <laughs> uh, media commentator and former BBC executive Tim Luckhurst. Uh, hi, Tim. I mean, for me, when I first saw this story, I thought, well, the BBC already put adverts. Uh, if you look at their content abroad, they've normally got adverts on the news website. And if you listen to some of their content or watch some of their channels abroad, same thing. And they've been selling the rights to some of their big programmes for a long time. This is sticking adverts on Spotify like anyone else does, surely. Well, um, I tend to take exactly the same view. I think it's a perfectly reasonable thing for the BBC want to, to want to do. After all, it's not going to put adverts on its own BBC Sounds app. It's not going to put adverts on live radio. You'll be able to listen to the BBC in exactly the same way if you do so, so through BBC services. But if the BBC is streaming through a commercial service, then it hopes that it'll be able to sell some advertising around its programs, non-news programs, I have to add. It's not going to chart, try and put any advertising around news programs. It would just be non-news programs like the Arches or Desert Island Discs. It would like to sell some advertising around that. Now, given that there's a £500 million shortfall in the BBC's funding at the moment because the licence fee has been kept very low and the government has not allowed inflationary increases for the last few years, I can understand exactly why the BBC is doing it. Uh, £3.8 billion a year is a lot of money. I've never quite understood. It's a bit like the NHS, oh, we haven't got enough money. But you get £200 billion quid a year. Surely you must be able to work with that. Surely the BBC must be able to work with £3.8 billion a year. I mean, the commercial broadcasters will kill you. They'd chop their right arm off for that. Uh, but if they do start the BBC taking... BBC does an awful lot more than the commercial broadcasters do. Yeah. And, of course, the £3.8 billion you're talking about is, in real terms, a lot less than the BBC would have been expecting to have if the licence fee had increased in line with inflation. So it's not a colossal sum, given the range of services. Well, it is a colossal sum, isn't it, Tim? Uh, but uh, the, the no, purists, I, BBC I agree, purists, BBC purists will say that this is the thin end of the wedge. It'll be like heroin. Once the BBC starts saying, hey, we can make a few quid out of advertising, let's extend it a bit. Let's make some more adverts. And before you know where you are, uh, we'll have adver adverts in the middle of Strictly and the news. And frankly, in my view, why not? Then I don't have to pay 170 quid a year for it. Well, I mean, I think you're making an interesting point there because I suspect the BBC's logic is that most of us won't want to pay £170 a year yeah. for the BBC services in the future, that it expects to have to have a rather smaller licence fee settlement and therefore needs to have ways of providing additional funding to maintain its services. It certainly doesn't want to have advertising on any of its terrestrial digital television stations, on any of its live radio programmes that would be to completely destroy the BBC's distinctive identity. It would also be, of course, colossally unpopular with commercial competitors because <laughs> the BBC's reach is such that if it were to run advertising on those mainstream services, it would compete very effectively and probably offer low prices, which would undercut the private sector. So no, none of us wants to do that because one of the mm. great things about the UK is we've got great private sector broadcasters as well as the BBC, and that's a good balance. Yeah, good I point, mean, good point. One, one would argue, actually, that the mandate of receiving the licence fee is upholding absolute impartiality. And yet again, the BBC have done something to upset a great many people like me and people in my cohort. They've had to release a grovelling apology for describing the third biggest political party in the UK now, Reform UK, as far right. I mean, this is another example of, I would say, a sort of campaigning media. That's just wrong, isn't it? Well, it's clearly wrong, and the BBC has apologised for it because it was wrong. But I think that describing it as the BBC describing reform as right-wing would be a little bit unfair. A journalist writing for BBC News Online described reform as far-right 
there were then perfectly reasonably very strenuous complaints from those who would describe reform as being conservative in some ways, um, left wing in some parts of its economic policy, but certainly not far right. And the individual was obliged to correct the copy. So one mistake, probably by a young journalist whose friends think that reform are far right, um, but then young people can have some rather distorted perspectives about politics if they don't follow it closely. And that's now been corrected. So of course, reform is not far right. And of course, it's been corrected, and that's quite proper. You've got to watch out for those young journalists, Tim. Yeah. You have to get old journalists like me. Uh, good to talk Thanks, to you. Thank send, you so send much. Send my love to the University of Durham. I miss it terribly. Do I will do, do so with great glee, and thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> thank you, Thanks, Tim. Tim. Tim Luckhurst there. Uh, and we do indeed have more of your texts and tweets on this issue coming in about the BBC. Rose writes, something has to fund all the wokeness they produce. <laughs> Bob says, the BBC has no financial problems. Simply <clears throat> shut down all the ludicrous local stations providing the most trivial information on so-called local issues. No, keep the local stations. Shut down the rest local. of it. Yeah. David's tweeted, if the BBC are using adverts, they should scrap the BBC licence fee. And Nigel says, is that you, Nigel? Is that my mate Farage? If the BBC starts showing adverts, it will kill commercial media. Well, that is a very interesting point, isn't it, in terms of the BBC monopoly yeah, uh, when it indeed. comes to uh, other channels competing.